Welcome to Counter-Strike Mapping Academy. I'm your host, Sammy Chimona Hihi Aliyubi. This is the Displacement Tool Guide, one of the most powerful features in Source 2 Hammer. In this tutorial, we will explore all the possible commands to take advantage of displacement tool operations. In order for the displacement tool to work, you must first subdivide the desired meshes. Without subdivided meshes, the displacement tool will not work. The higher the subdivision level, the more detailed your displacements can be. This also affects your frame count, with higher levels costing more resources. Try to use the lowest level possible for optimization purposes. Use higher levels on surfaces that need more complexity. It will be tempting to use one giant mesh with a super high level of subdivision for large surfaces. My suggestion for using displacement across large surfaces is to create a grid using squares with edges of 128 or 256 units. Within these squares, keep your subdivision to the lowest level possible. Delete and adjust the grid as necessary, extruding the basic shapes for the mountain and valleys as you build your displacement piece. Once you've done the preparation work, enter displacement mode by clicking the icon or pressing Shift D. Your cursor will change into a target, showing the area and strength of where your displacement operation will affect the mesh. Pressing left click will affect the mesh by painting the displacement with the selected operation. This will be the direction of the normal, indicated by the yellow arrow on your target cursor. Holding down control and pressing left click will activate the reverse modifier. To pull the mesh in the direction of the normal, hold down left click. To push the mesh in the opposite, hold down control and press left click. Flattening the mesh will pull up the subdivision to a uniform level across the target cursor. To push and then flatten, activate the reverse modifier holding down control and pressing left click. We'll go over the other flatten operations in an upcoming section. To move the vertices of the mesh displacement, Hold down left click and drag it in any direction. Holding down control will force a move operation to work on the Z axis of the targeted surface. Inflate will create a balloon at the point of your pulled peak. Clay will create an elevated plateau that will automatically fly on the top of your displacement. The reverse modifier will push the subdivision down and then flatten at the bottom, perfect for making valleys. Pinch will pull in the vertices around the perimeter of the target cursor and almost merge them together. This can be useful for creating sharp peaks. Erase will remove the operations that displace the mesh of your target crosshair and attempt to return them back to their original form. Smooth will transform the selection so that it transitions cleaner by adjusting the verts to decrease the sharpness of any angles. The radius determines the size of the target cursor and the range of surface area affected by the operation. You can increase this by holding down middle mouse and moving left to right. Strength determines how much of the operation to apply when pressing left click or using the reverse modifier. You can increase this by holding down middle mouse and moving up and down. Offset is only available for certain operations. This will determine the difference in the extremity of the operations, such as increased elevation per click on your cave or pinch operations. Smooth Amount will determine how much to smooth the differences between terrain displacements. The higher the value, the quicker the transition will form. Lower values will give you more control. Save Radius 
will keep the current radius for your operation consistent each time you select this tool. Adjusting the radius of another operation will not affect the operation if this is checked. If this is unchecked, you can carry over the radius size from one operation to the next. Materials that have back faces set up will be excluded from any operation if this is checked. If you uncheck this box, then you can perform operations on materials with back faces. To determine the direction the sculpting will be performed in, look at the direction of the arrow that is currently on the yellow cursor. This can be modified by changing normal mode and how the engine calculates it by selecting one of the following. Average normal mode will take the normals in the area of your target cursor and sculpt in the average direction of the normals. Screen normal mode will take the direction of the screen and its current angle as a determining factor of the direction of the sculpt. Mouse down normal mode will take the direction of the current normal it is over and use that as a sculpting direction. This can vary wildly with small precision movements. X will lock the operation to be affected only in the X direction of the plane. Y will lock the operation to be affected in only the Y direction of the plane. Z will lock the operation to be affected in only the Z direction of the plane. Modifying flatten mode will only be enabled when entering the flatten operation. This will determine what point of elevation to normalize a mesh to. Center will bring it to the average of the highest and lowest elevation over the target cursor. Raise will bring it to the highest point of the cursor. Lower will bring it to the lowest point of the cursor. If this is not checked, it will take the height and surface normal mode from the first click and continue to keep that as long as left click is held. If update plane is checked, it will update it as you move averaging out the heights to create a more ramping effect. Changing the weight of the brush will determine the outcome of each sculpt direction. You can use preset brushes already made or manually modify them across four different parameters. The changes can be seen in the visual output of the brush shape. You can choose between the following presets for your sculpt shape smooth, linear, sharp, round, and hard. If you want to specify how the brush sculpt shape looks, you can manually change the following presets. In weight, out weight, in slope, and out slope. Selecting everything will give you full control over anything with the subdivided face being a target for your operation. Choosing selected objects will only allow the displacements of the mesh if they are selected in object mode before entering the displacement tool. Highlight selected objects will give you a visual indicator of what selection will undergo the displacement operation by highlighting it against others that are not editable. To quickly smooth your displacements, hold down shift and then press left click to switch to the smoothing tool that is based on the current smooth settings. To quickly erase your displacements, hold down control shift and then press left click to switch to the erasing tool that is based on the current strength modifier. Hold down control and then right click on a vertex to pick the current normal map to it. 
you will see the cursor change from a yellow to now a red arrow, indicating that the normal has been selected. Hold down Control alt and then press right-click to reset the normal that was picked earlier. This will change your cursor from red back to yellow, indicating the new normal direction over the current surface. To escape from the displacement tool mode, press either escape or the spacebar. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial on the displacement tool. Please like, subscribe, and join our Discord for more help, participate in our community events, and to play our games and maps.